Hello, in this video I'm going to share with you 10 tips and tricks that you can use to keep your email messages out of the spam folder. Whether you're a business sending a weekly newsletter to 100,000 email subscribers or an individual sending just a few emails a week to a shorter list of subscribers, you want those emails to actually make it to the receiver, to their inbox. You don't want that message going into their spam folder because chances are they won't find it. They won't see it. They won't read it. So these are some things I want to share with you. Everything that I talk about in this video, I'll include a link in this video's description so that you can follow up and implement these tips. The first tip I want to share with you are blacklists. You want to make sure that you're not on any email blacklists because if your email server is on a blacklist, those messages will get marked as spam immediately. So we can use this website here, mxtoolbox.com, and we can enter our IP address for our email server and that will check to see if it is on any blacklists and this is just an overall great tool. The second tip I want to share with you is to be compliant with the CAN Spam Act. Now, this is really intended for people who are sending commercial advertisements or promotional emails. Let's say you're promoting a product or a service, then you really should comply with their guidelines. Um, and their guidelines are pretty simple. It's they they're things like don't use false or misleading header information. Don't use deceptive subject lines, identify the message as an ad, uh, you know, tell recipients where you're located and how they can opt out of receiving future emails from you and honor those opt outs requests promptly or else you'll be reported. The third tip I want to share with you is to avoid spam trigger words. Believe it or not, there are words that you can include in your email that will trigger your email message as spam. Now these words range from no obligation to can't live without, extra income, uh, serious cash, work at home, increased sales, increased traffic. This is just a great resource to cross check against your email to see if you do have any of these weird uh, spam trigger words. Now by reducing the number of these types of spam trigger words you'll increase the number of messages that make it through to your recipients. Tip number five is using a spam checker before you actually hit send. So my favorite website to do this is isnotspam.com and you can send them an email with the content of your email and they'll send you a report back telling you how likely it is for that message to trigger spam filters. Really, really cool. Highly recommend it. Tip number six is to maintain a good text to image ratio. Don't send only images. As a rule of thumb, for every image that you send, send at least two lines of text. Tip number seven is optimizing your images. You want to send high quality images in your emails, but you don't want those images to be large and file size. So reducing the size of the image files is what we call optimizing. Now there are a number of different services online that can do this. You could just go ahead and Google image optimization, but here's a site that I like that's free and will optimize those images for you. Tip number eight is to avoid large attachments. If you're sending 10 megabyte email attachments, that very well could trigger spam filters to mark your message as spam. So as a rule of thumb, try and keep your email attachments two to three megabytes or less to avoid having spam filters mark your message as spam. Tip number nine is to avoid certain types of files. If you're sending photos, JPEGs, PNGs, PDFs, documents, Microsoft Word files, those are all fine. But if you're sending EXE files, installer packages, zip files, Visual Basic scripts, those types of files will trigger the virus scanners and your message will be marked as spam and it's very likely that your email service provider is blacklisted. So it's always good to use a different type of service to send those types of files. I recommend using Dropbox. It's free to create an account. They give you two gigs for free. You upload the weird exe file or zip file to Dropbox. Then Dropbox gives you a download link and you can include the download link in the email instead of attaching that weird file. Last but not least is tip number 10 and that is using an email delivery service. Now I happen to use Mad Mimi and I think they're great. What I can do is not have to worry so much about my messages going into spam because I use Mad Mimi. 
who is a trusted email delivery service. Another great thing with Mad Mimi is that I can track how many of those messages in fact did go to spam. I can also track how many of those messages were delivered, how many of those email messages were even opened. I can even see how many people decided to opt in or opt out. So those analytics really help me improve future newsletters and future email blasts and so I think that alone is just invaluable and so that's why I highly recommend using an email delivery service. Now you don't have to use Mad Mimi. I use Mad Mimi. I'm happy with them. Just to give you another email delivery service to compare this with, a very popular one is Constant Contact. So go ahead and check these out um, and think about maybe using a service like this to just avoid having your messages going into spam folders and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did you know, feel free to leave me a comment. I really appreciate it. If you have any tips yourself, leave a comment. Everybody else appreciates that. And like always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.